Fascism. Let's talk about it. This should be a light topic. Fascism is a slippery word, not because it's hard to define, but because people who want to obscure what fascism is or hide their connection to fascism have an investment in making fascism mean something besides what it is. Fascism is not outlawing salt and unhealthy foods. It's also not left-wing or socialist, and if you believe it is, you have either fallen for 80-year-old debunked German propaganda, or you are consciously trying to spread 80-year-old debunked German propaganda. And that politics graph that people put in their avatars when they can't think of something better, like Heath Ledger's Joker or a suspiciously young-looking anime character. It's all good for you, you're wrong. See, I say fascism is a slippery word, but not actually hard to define because historians can simply look at how fascism arose in its varying and most famous forms and find commonalities to give it a definition. And they have. So what does this have to do with Star Wars? Well, Star Wars has always trafficked in fascistic imagery. A New Hope's costume designer crafted the Empire's uniforms to put the audience in mind of Nazi Germany. This might seem like a tenuous connection to some, but fascism has always relied on pageantry and an aesthetic to sell it to the people. In film, visuals are everything, and even if Grand Moff Tarkin never turns to the camera and lays out the ideology, origins, and core values of the Empire, and how they relate to Umberto Eco's criteria for fascism, the visuals alone are the language in which Star Wars tells the audience roughly what the Empire believes. In the original trilogy, there isn't a lot of explicit focus on what the Empire believes, what their core values are. Palpatine just believes in the dark side. The Empire is an amorphous bad guy. However, there are a few moments in the original trilogy that brush up against Echo's criteria for fascism. Professor Griffin argues that fascism requires an upending of the current order and current democratic institutions. Early in A New Hope, the Empire remarks that they have finally dissolved the Senate, removing the last remnants of the Old Republic. <laughs> the Nazis rose to power in Germany following their humiliating defeat in World War I, the humiliation of being solely blamed for the war and the sanctions imposed on their nation. In the prequel trilogy, Senator Palpatine works within the system but illegally uses his position to consolidate power. He invents a scapegoat, pits his people against them, abandons democratic liberties, and pursues violence without ethical or legal constraints. His Order 66 The Force Awakens and The Last Jedi actually go harder when comparing the antagonists to fascists. Some of it blatantly obvious, like the unmistakable imagery used here. In Italy, the fascists wanted to rid the nation of the scourge of modernism, communism, and liberalism. Italian fascism required respect for tradition and a shared past among the Italian people. Italian fascists sought to complete risorgimento, Italian unification of different states into the Kingdom of Italy a movement begun almost a century prior but left incomplete. To achieve the goals of Italian greatness, fascists espoused three core values, hierarchy, discipline, and order. Fascism always wants to return to an older order and claim it as the original one and the correct one. More than unification, Italian fascism invoked the past by claiming that Italy was the rightful heir to the Roman Empire itself. Fascism always tells people, once we were great, but we lost our way because of our enemy, and we will be great again if we do what is necessary. Benito Mussolini claimed that his people, the Mediterranean, were a branch of the Aryan race, though Italian fascism was far more focused on justifying its actions through culture than race. In Germany, fascism took root in a similar manner, a romanticization of the past, a perceived enemy, a unity after a perceived humiliation, and a rejection of modernism. They declared a return to traditional German and Nordic values, to remove or limit Jewish, foreign, and degenerate influences, which ranged from everything to the wrong kind of art to communism. The Nazis wanted Germany to return to an older order. In Star Wars The Force Awakens, 
We are introduced to the new antagonist of the series, the First Order, rising from the ashes of the Empire. Fascists love to connect themselves to the great deeds of the past and the great men of history, like this guy thinks he's a knight or something, bravely defending the white race from, I don't know, Mexicans? <laughs> Fascism requires a past, a false history of being wronged because of the envy of others, the envy of their greatness. This is not some new order, no, 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 no. This is the first order, an older order. The originals, those tied to the greatness of the past, even if that greatness never happened. The Galactic Empire was built on a lie, oppressed the galaxy, abolished democracy, and was defeated by a ragtag group of rebels. However, the First Order's rhetoric is eerily reminiscent of how fascism begins. Once we were great, we lost our way because of our enemy, and we will be great again if we do what is necessary. What is necessary to fascists includes the eradication of degenerate influences. The First Order carries this out by annihilating the Republic planets. The First Order is obsessed with the past because they have to be, otherwise their narrative falls apart. He's the bad guy. What he says is not the message of the film. Instead, the past is a teacher. Failure a teacher. Yoda says it himself. The greatest teacher failure is. 